ladies and gentlemen. Angie and I are so honored to be here today. We thank Russ and Shelly Z for organizing this. We thank our first responders for what you do, and thanks for everybody for being here. Fifteen years ago, one tower had already been hit, and we're within minutes now of the second tower getting hit. And at the end of the day, 2,996 people lost their lives. And 411 of those were our first responders. Many of those were running into burning buildings while they were trying to escape, and they lost their lives saving others. I'm reminded of a verse in the book of John, and Jesus said, there's no greater love than the one who gives his life for others, for his friends. And our first responders show that love to our community every day. And often for folks they do not know. So we're grateful. We thank you. Fifteen years ago, we realized we were at war. Truth be told, the terrorists had been at war with us for years earlier. But on that day, we did realize that these terrorists had no boundaries. They would strike here. And they had no moral boundaries. That they would strike it and be as inhumane, as barbaric as possible. There were no boundaries. Fifteen years ago, I was a lieutenant colonel. I was on my ninth assignment. I was stationed at Davis Lawton Air Force Base in Tucson. I already had two assignments here. I was working for a three-star. I was his executive officer, which is a fancy word for being an aide. And I woke up at the normal time, about 5 o'clock, Tucson time. Showered up, had a cup of coffee, had breakfast, did a quick devotions. I had about 10 minutes before I needed to go into work. Routine day, it seemed. I turned on the TV, and the routine stopped. There was one tower that was already on fire. And the newscaster was trying to figure out how could a plane on a clear blue sky, just like today, hit that building. So I went and told Angie, I said, Angie, one of the World Centers or Trade Centers has been hit. So she turned on the TV and I was putting on my boots and slowly getting ready to go on, watching what was going on. Then that second tower exploded and it all became clear. So I ran out the door, went to my pickup truck, drove five miles to Davis Mathen, went to the gate guard, and I said, hey, we're under attack, and he didn't know yet. I said, within minutes, this base will be at the highest security. We're going to go to the highest threat counter, force protection levels. And drove onto the base, met with my three-star boss. And within minutes of doing that through the gate, though, the gate, the base did shut down. Uh, the security went all the way, as high as it could go. But I got to watch my three-star that day, who, was in, who oversaw all the combat Air Force bases west of the Mississippi, work with every single base commander talking about which, which people needed to be on alert, ready to deploy, what aircraft do we need to have on alert. And we were still afraid that maybe even more aircraft were hijacked, maybe even on the West Coast. So he was putting the aircraft on alert with the orders to be ready to shoot down if ordered. That night, kept, we can't forget what it was like to listen to President Bush. The range of emotions. I know personally I had tears in my eyes. But those full range of emotions of sorrow, of knowing... Thousands of people have lost their life that day. The sorrow of the family members not knowing if their, if their loved ones lived or died yet. And also, just to put empathizing, putting ourselves in their shoes, of those who are at the high end of those towers who couldn't escape, the fear they must have felt, or those on those hijacked aircraft, the terror that must have been felt there too. But I also remember feeling anger and resolve that we were going to crush those who did this and crush those who helped facilitate those terrorist attacks. I think all of us in uniform that day also knew that our lives had changed in the military, that it was not going to be the same. I remember starting out my career, it was the Soviet Union, the Cold War, then it was the Iraq invasion of Kuwait, and then the no-fly zones of the north and south Iraq for 10 years. But on that day, a new chapter had started, and indeed it has. When you go to off an Air Force base today and you talk to the airmen who fly in the RC-135s, when they retire, most of them have been on 25 deployments, rotations to the Middle East. And we can't forget that over 6,888 6, servicemen and women have made the ultimate sacrifice in Iraq and Afghanistan since 9-11. And every single one of them had their own special story and loved ones and left a big hole in families' lives. Today, 15 years later, we're still at war. We may not want to be at war, 
but Al-Qaeda and ISIS are at war with us. And we know that they have no boundaries, political boundaries, but even worse yet, their ideology has no boundaries, and their willingness to do barbaric acts have no boundaries. We must maintain that resolve to defeat this enemy, and it is a challenge. It's a challenge to focus on them, but at the same time we have unpredictable actors like North Korea. We have 10 nuclear weapons estimated, and Iran, who says we're their enemy, we will likely have nuclear capacity in 10 years, and even Russia, who threatens their local neighbors. We can do this. We can overcome, but we have a shared vision, and that's the goal of the leaders, to develop a shared vision. And with a shared vision, our country can accomplish much. So let me close and return full circle back to our first responders. In the Civil War, it was said the best leaders would ride to the sound of the guns, that they wouldn't avoid the fight, that they would go to the fight. The weak leaders would avoid it and find reasons not to go there. Our first responders ride to the sound of the guns every single day. They go into burning buildings, they cry us out of red cars, they do CPR, they take felons off the street, they threaten our families our neighborhoods, and we appreciate you. So today I say, we say thank you, we appreciate you, we honor you, we admire you, and we adore you.